Good morning. Today is Tuesday, the 12th of July. Uh, it's a ferrier in the 15th week of the Church's ordinary time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honour. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. And the first reading is from Isaiah chapter 7. In the reign of Ahaz, son of Jotham, son of Isaiah, king of Judah, Rezon, the king of Aram, went up against Jerusalem, with Pekah, son of Remelia, king of Israel, to lay siege to it, but he was unable to capture it. The news was brought to the house of David, Aram, they said, has reached Ephraim. In the heart of the king and the hearts of the people shuddered as the trees of the forest shudder in front of the wind. The Lord said to Isaiah, Go with your son, Shir Jashub, and meet Ahaz at the end of the conduit at the upper pool on the Fuller's Field Road, and say to him, Pay attention, keep calm, have no fear, do not let your heart sink, because these two smouldering stumps of firebrands, or because Aram, Ephraim, and the son of Ramalia have plotted to ruin you, and have said, Let us invade Judah and terrorize it, and seize it for ourselves, and set up a king there, the son of Tabeel. The Lord says this, It shall not come true, it shall not be. The capital of Aram is Damascus, the head of Damascus, Razon, the capital of Ephraim, Samaria, the head of Samaria, the son of Ramalia. Six or five years more, and a shattered Ephraim shall no longer be a people. But if you do not stand by me, you will not stand at all. The word of the Lord. In the Gospel is the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11. Jesus began to reproach the towns in which most of his miracles had been worked, because they refused to repent. Alas for you, Chorazin! Alas for you, Bethsaida! For if the miracles done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. And still, I tell you that it will not go as hard on Judgment Day with Tyre and Sidon as with you. And as for you, Capernaum, did you not want to be exalted as high as heaven? You shall be thrown down to hell. For if the miracles done in you had been done in, Shod in Sodom, it would have been standing yet. And still, I tell you, it will go, not go as hard with the hand of Sodom on Judgment Day as with you. Gospel of the Lord. In Isaiah, we're dealing with fairly complex military situations. Judah, the kingdom of the south, is threatened by both Syria and Israel, the kingdom of the north. Um, but Isaiah tells the king of Judah, don't worry, they won't conquer you. Stay faithful to the Lord, and in four or five years' time, they will themselves be conquered by somebody else. Now we know who that somebody else is. It's Assyria. Um, and the temptation for the king of Judah is to say, do I trust the Lord? Or do I make a deal with Assyria? And sadly, he goes for a deal with Assyria. And the Lord is going to say, well, in which case you have chosen to make a deal with another human power and you didn't trust me, so you will suffer the consequences. Of course, we'll be overrun. Pointing up as a, yet again the choice between being faithful to God and faithful to false gods, whether money, self-esteem, individualism, you name it. Similarly, the Gospel is also a challenge. It's Jesus challenging the towns of the north, Bethsaida, and above all Capernaum, his headquarters, and saying, if the miracles have been done in Capernaum, and Jesus, of course, that was his base, that's where he did all his preaching from, and came back to when he finished preaching, did lots of healings, etc. there, but they didn't accept. Um, and Jesus is saying those two great 
cities, Sodom and Gomorrah, who were so full of sin and unfaithfulness. If the, half the signs that Capernaum had seen had been done there, they would have repented. So Jesus is threatening, saying, be faithful, and if you're unfaithful, you will reap the consequences. So the readings are about challenging us, where is our heart? I know today's reading is for Tuesday, but I'm recording it on Sunday. And the Sunday morning program, the Half Past Six Reflection, was all about money. Um, Mark Telly doing a whole program on how we're caught up with a love-hate relationship with money. On the one hand, we recognise that somehow we must rise above it. On the other hand, it's absolutely essential, and we're all absolutely involved in getting the money we need. And of course, now that uh, salaries are below the standard of living, and the cost of living is going up and up, money is going to be at the front of our, our day, our worry every day for many people. And it's as it should be, because we do need to survive and have a proper system of buying and selling, earning money and spending it on what we need. And so in the midst of this, we ask God to help us to always put the kingdom of heaven first, in ways that we can, for generosity, helping each other, and at the same time making sure we don't get totally involved in matters of money and trying to get more and more. They say the biggest danger is to want to save and save and save, to somehow make sure you're always independent of other people so you never need to ask for help. We all need help from each other. We all need to turn to each other to get by. We turn now to our bidding prayers. The response is, Christ be mindful of your people. By shedding his blood for us, Christ gathered together a new people from every corner of the earth. Let us pray to him. Christ, be mindful of your people. Christ, our King and Redeemer, help us to know your power and your love. Christ, be mindful of your people. Christ, our hope and courage, sustain us throughout the day. Christ, be mindful of your people. Christ, our refuge and strength, fight with us against our weakness. Christ, be mindful of your people. Christ, our joy and solace, stay with the poor and lonely. Christ, be mindful of your people. You taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, to whom this world with all its goodness and beauty belongs, Give us grace joyfully to begin this day in your name and to fill it with an act of love for you and our neighbour. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God come down upon you and remain with you always. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good day. All the best.